You're tuned in to The Keetra Show and listening to SOB, Style of Business, the podcast with your host, Keetra. We aim to highlight the ongoing trek of entrepreneurs and business owners from around the globe, featuring stories that recount their struggles, experiences, and inevitable road to success and self-fulfillment. Welcome to SOB. Hey, hey, hello to my beautiful SOB style of business audience. I truly, 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 dearly appreciate you guys' support and always checking out the episodes of SOB. I'm back with a new episode. We're going to be doing them weekly now. And uh, with this particular episode, we're going to be talking about, get ready, get excited. I'm going to drum roll on the desk. Get ready because we're talking about the good old word retirement, 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 retirement. And I know a lot of us probably are not even, well, I don't know, maybe I guess will let us know if we're too young to be thinking about it. But I have the wonderful Kevin Vaughn, who is also known by his pen name, Point Given. He's going to be talking to us today on the show about retirement. He's going to be talking to us today about like his take on it. He's a, a writer and also a new author, and he just dropped a good book. So without further delay, let's go ahead and let him have a word, and then we're going to roll right into this wonderful interview. So point, 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 give, and go ahead and give us an introduction and let us know what you're up to. Hey, how's it going, teacher? This is, uh, yeah, this is Point Given. I'm definitely uh, excited to be here. Glad to be on the style of business. And I'm looking forward to talking about a topic that, you know, most people think is for, for old people. And, uh, <laughs> and it's not at all what we're going to be talking about. This is uh, a new way of thinking about it. So scrap whatever you think about retirement. This is completely different. Yeah, yeah, and I I tell you what, I tried to be a little bit subtle on the introduction, but yeah, I mean, when when you talk about retirement, the first thing that that comes up is uh, older people, and even as my parents kind of get into the retirement age, it's, it's, you know, you never really know exactly what it is. I know what it looks like, you know, from what I've seen in my experience, but it's definitely one of those things that I don't think is discussed enough. So if you will, Point, give us a little bit about your background and tell us about your career and, and, you know, how you got into this uh, particular topic. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm actually um, a mortgage sales coach. I'm a corporate trainer for a uh, for a big mortgage company. Um, I've been doing that for the past few years, not to mention um, I've been in financial services for over a decade, um, different executive level positions for, you know, other little ventures and stuff like that that I got into. But I've always been a writer because I've always, you know, kind of appreciated you know, human behavior and, you know, different things that we could do to observe the world and try to make the world a better place. Of course, of course. Yeah, and I know early this month, you released your, your gym, and I refer to it as gym because some of the stuff I was reading, I mean, it, it, it's uh, hilarious. There's some, some different little tidbits of information in there that are very informative, but it's also a little bit lighthearted. The book is called How Millennials Will Beat Their Parents to Retirement, The Cure to What's Always Been Wrong with How We Retire. What compelled you to like really get into like the research and the, the topic of retirement? So it's funny enough, right? So it didn't really take research. Like every single day, I guess you could say it was research for me. Because every single day, I'm either, you know, advising people on what to do with their money or I'm teaching, you know, a younger group of people just coming into the workforce how to <laughs> yeah. um, advise people what to do with their money. And you start to think about it. You know, every single day I'm thinking about, okay, well, you know, if you have $20,000 or if you're saving $100 a month, what do you do with all this money? Um, and most people, they end up just blowing it. They end up just, you know, spending it. They end up doing something that's more short-term um, than long-term. You know, and I think that through the book, you kind of take the journey. And like you said, it's lighthearted. I'm not trying to hit you over the head with big words. I'm just trying to get you to understand that you can do something different with retirement, right? For the last 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, retirement basically stayed the same. You basically work for 40 years. You work 40 hours a week. You work 52 weeks a year. And then when you get old, you know, then you get to retire, hopefully, right? Mm-hmm. Hopefully. And I just don't think that that is at all the way that it should be. I think it's time for a change. Yeah, it's definitely time for a change. And I'll tell you what, you, you definitely struck a chord um, when you were talking about just when you have that additional 20K or just, you know, sometimes we get a little extra, you know, on the paycheck and um, we want to go hit up the mall or, or go out to a nice restaurant and order the biggest thing on the menu. But, you know, I guess to me, it kind of comes down to maybe habit and routine when it comes to like saving and things like that. And that's, I know saving is a whole different subject. Not very sexy. It's not a very sexy subject. Hey, I'm going to hang up the phone on you right there. <laughs> 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 well, 
<laughs> we're not going to talk about that right now. But yeah, I mean, because it's, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, you when you're younger, you kind of follow in some of the things that you see others around you do. And then you have to kind of break that mold and change your habits and stuff like that a little bit. But my question for you is like, in terms of retirement, like what was your main premise or idea behind the concept when it came to like millennials beating their parents to retirement? I'm a millennial, right? So I'm one of the, uh, yeah, to the older, you know, the grand elder millennials, right? <laughs> yeah, so I saw that. Okay. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I saw, I, I saw what you mentioned that in the book. Yeah, so, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm kind of like the first class that's going to be heading into starting to think like this. But I do know that the rest are coming. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. And eventually they're going to start to think this way. So for me, I tripped upon it, right? So for me, I never wanted to own a home. It's like I'm against it. I'm against it. It's just it's a headache. It's expensive. It's a liability. I'm fine renting. I'm fine doing this. I'm fine doing that. I did it for years. And then recently, I kind of got myself together. Me and my wife decided, you know what? It's a little bit more cost effective to own a home, right? So I bought a house. Got a great deal. You know, luckily I know a few people being in the industry and thought that was it. And I said, you know, that's, that's not bad. That's pretty good. I got myself a house. It feels pretty good. But then a couple weeks after I bought my home, you know, I started looking at Zillow again. And I started seeing that the sales in my area had gone up 50 grand on houses just like mine. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, $50,000 more than what I bought it for. So it kind of, you know, it sparked this moment of inspiration where I was saying to myself, oh, my God, I wonder what this house is going to be worth in five years. Yeah. And if it were worth a hundred grand more than what I bought it for, it'd be great to capitalize on that and get the money out. And that kind of, you know, kind of steamrolled into, oh, well, what would you do with the money? And I thought of a million things I'd do with that. But the one thing that kind of stuck was, man, I'd love to take a break. I'd yeah. love to take a break for two years to five years from working. Me and my wife both, while my kids are still in the house. So... That's kind of how it started, and then it kind of branched out from that. I started thinking about it more, and it just came. It became something that I was just obsessed with after a week, and that grew into the book. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I, I'm going to backtrack a bit because I was reading where you were talking about, and you, you sound a little bit salty point when you were writing, you know, when I was reading your words, but the European vacation, when you were kind of mentioning. I am. I am salty. You're a little salty all that. Hey, <laughs> hey, I'm with you in that club. Tell us, what's your take on that? You know, because I know like here you have to accumulate the sick days. You have to get the vacation days. You're only granted X amount of hours. What's your take on that? Right. So long story short, in America, for the most part, we average about 10 days off a year. And, you know, that's what we're used to. So that seems normal. But if you actually, um, I did some research. I'm looking into France, country yeah. France, in terms of how they handle retirement. And over in France, you either take the entire month of July off or the entire month of August off every single year every single year and I, when, I, when I read that that blew my mind I said oh my god that'd be great if that could happen over here but you know like I know that's never going to happen yeah. so I said well okay well how do we create our own break you know from working we had a month off every single year I'm sure people would look at life a little bit different wouldn't seem like so much of a grind there'd be a little bit more time with family I'm sure that would change life completely yeah. But yeah. I, I just know that that's not a reality. Yeah, and I know you even had a special term. I saw like it was Julyist, and you called the <laughs> you you called the. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's what they call it. It's either you're either a Julyist or an Augustist. Oh right? wow. And when I first read that, I said, "What the you know what the yeah, heck you, is this? yeah you did." But then, <laughs> but as I kept reading, I said, "Oh," and then I said, "Oh," and then I got mad. Yeah. And I said, "I want that. I want that in some way, shape, or form. I want a break. I want a real break, not a weekend." You know, weekend feels like like nothing. Everyone knows yeah. this is how a weekend works. You know, you, you're off of work on Friday, you feel great. Saturday, you feel good. <laughs> and yeah. then by Sunday morning, all you can think about is Monday. Right, right. Yeah, that sounds like just about how that movie plays out to most of us. So i um, definitely been there and done that. Point, was there anyone that, that you looked up to or um, anyone that you sought out to gain more information. I know you've spent plenty of years in finance, but who did you reach out to or was there anyone that inspired you when it comes to like finances and, and money management? Yeah, that, that list is very long. But um, for me, anybody that's in a position that I would like to be in, so anyone that, you know, is self-employed, anybody that doesn't have to work 
for someone else or doesn't have to work every single day or works from, from home or, you know, there's all different types of folks out there that do all types of different types of things. I'm curious, right? So I'm always asking questions about regular everyday people that I see that are in a position I'd like to be in. And I, I never hesitate to ask questions and say, you know, how did you get there? Yeah. Yeah. Asking questions. I mean, we, a lot of us are a little bit hesitant to ask questions, but I guess that's the only way that you'll know and be able to kind of learn and gain insight from how to do it, which brings me to my next question. What do you think are like the most common misconceptions about retirement? Most common misconceptions about retirement. I think that's pretty straightforward. I think that people think that it has to be at the end of your life. Yeah. And I hate to sound morbid, but people think that comes at the end. And that retirement should be when you're old, right? But for me, I'm trying to wipe that away. I'm trying to make people realize that, listen, you know, if you took five years off when you're 45, what would you do with that time, right? And how would that be different than what you would do when you're 70, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think you would enjoy traveling the country more at 45, maybe taking the summer and, you know, going somewhere with your kids or with your, you know, significant other, whatever it is? Yeah. I just feel like that there could be a better use of that time a little bit earlier. Well, I'll tell you what, that's that's definitely inspiring because you got my think tank going when you uh when you kind of mentioned taking a vacation at 45 versus 75 or, you know, beyond. So it's definitely something to think about. And um, as a society, like, where do you think we stand as far as educating people on retirement? And then also, what advice would you offer? As a society, I think that we do a good enough job, I guess, in terms of keeping the status quo. I think that most people don't want to think about retirement because they don't want to think about the end of their life. They don't want to think about things that are a little less pleasant. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's a tough thing. I think to get people excited about it, I think you have to kind of wake them up. You know, you have to tell them that it's coming. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. One way or another, it's coming. So it's uh, it's going to be up to you how you want to do it. And for me, and for, you know, as a millennial, I'm looking at it like we haven't done anything else the way our parents do it. So why are we going to start (laughs) at at the end? Yeah. Exactly. Why are we going to start at the end of our lives? Why are we going to start just saying, oh, well, that's how, it, that's how it's done. That's what happens to you. And I don't mean that to sound like that there's anything wrong with how our parents are doing it, but we don't listen to the music they listen to. It doesn't mean that we feel any less about them. It's just that we do things differently. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree. I totally agree. And point, let's, let's talk a little bit about Chapter 5, which sure. is specifically titled, What's Your <laughs> Number? To me, the higher the number, the better, right? <laughs> so so uh, yeah. depending on what yeah. we're talking about, especially when it comes to finances, but tell us about how that's broken down and how we can start saving now. Right. So, um, you know, the biggest thing people always say is I'll never be able to, you know, save $20,000 or $100,000 or whatever that number they think it is, right? They think it's going to be a million dollars you're going to have to have to do it. And that's definitely, uh, you yeah, know, it's unfortunate that people don't realize that there's ways to get there. Right? So for me, home ownership is one of the main approaches that you can take. Owning a home, and it's been done like this for decades, is the easiest way to accumulate any type of wealth or any type of money. So just simply buying a house and having the direction from someone you know, as a financial advisor in terms of how to treat that investment, you can get there very quickly. I'm pretty sure I can get there in five years, and my number is about 250000 yeah. I'm pretty sure I can get there in five years. So it's a combination. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can get there. It's a little bit home ownership, or a lot of it home ownership. I'm a little bit budgeting. You know, a lot of people don't take a look at their bank account. It's almost like they're playing the lottery when they go to the ATM. What do I have in there today? Versus taking more of a proactive approach where we're watching what's happening. So when I went to go get my mortgage, I saw where my money was going. And once I saw where it was going, I just redirected it back into my pocket. And now I'm now I'm making more money, even though I'm making the same money. Exactly. Yeah, and I know you you also uh, kind of break it down and discuss a little bit more about the family dynamic and the makeup, and you know, obviously the less amount of well, I guess when you were talking about the people that have children versus you know single people and all that other stuff, I guess the number changes. But all in all, it was definitely some some very helpful information in order to kind of give you a um, you know a starter course, so to speak, on how to get started on saving. So. Definitely some good stuff. In simple simple terms, just real quick, if you want to know, if you wanted to ballpark it real quick, if you simply just took how much money you make per year, and I mean net, not taking the gross, let's say you make $60,000 a year, and you're going to net about $40,000 a year. It depends on how many years you were planning on taking that break for. Let's say it was three years. You would take the 40 grand times three, 
and your number would be somewhere around 120 grand that you would need to save up. And it, it sounds, you know, it sounds crazy to some folks, but if you read the book, you can start to see that it's more attainable than you think. And not to mention that, the whole break and taking a break thing, I'm never going to go back to work when, I'm, when I get done. <laughs> I hear you. I'm never going to go back. And I, I talk about that as well. Yeah, definitely. I know some people are probably excited to read and find out a little bit more. Tell us what resources you would recommend for those of us who are interested in learning more about retirement options and really like the basic foundation of how to get started. Because sometimes you see those commercials and then you get like different uh, various information you might get from other people and all that other stuff. Give us like some basic resources for like a beginner on how we can start looking into retirement options. Yeah, so for me, what I've always done is use the internet. <laughs> you know, I've used Good Google. old Google, yeah. I try, try to find um, sources that are, you know, .org versus .com, um, just to be honest with you, because they're, they're, they're more pure information. They're not trying to redirect it somewhere else. But, you know, anything that's .org that's, you know, that's talking about finances, I think is a solid, you know, beginning spot. I think you should also, I don't think enough of us talk to financial advisors. You know, I think that when you have no money, is the time to, to talk to a financial advisor, not when you have a lot. I think that a lot of people think that, oh, i got to have money to talk to an advisor. But it really, you talk to the advisor in order to get the money. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think that's some of the things where, where people can start for sure. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, and uh, Point, what's the main takeaway you want the readers to get from how millennials will beat their parents to retirement? Main takeaway is that I think by the title of the book, a lot of people think that I mean, you're going to retire before the age that your parents retired at. But I want people to get excited about actually retiring before your parents do, right? And I, and I know, yeah. you know, maybe it's not for good. You know, maybe you're going to have to go back to work. Maybe not. What goes into the maybe not. But I want people to get excited about beating your parents to retirement and what that can mean for your family, for your life, and for everything else that goes along with that. Excellent. Good information. Good advice. All right, Point Given, let us know where we can find you online, social media handles, and also, most importantly, let us know where we can grab the book. I know you have the ebook version as well as a paperback as well. Yeah, so as far as reaching out to me on social media, my page on Facebook is Beat the Parents at Millennials Retirement. Right, so Beat the Parents at Millennials Retirement. And if you want to find the book, it's very easy. Go to Amazon and mm-hmm. type in Point Given. That's P. N T space G V N and my book will come up as the first option. Excellent. And also uh, I will definitely have that information in the show notes where they can grab the book along with your social media handle and, and all that other good stuff. Point definitely let us know if you if you have any upcoming events, we'll have to have you back on to give us an update and let us know how things are going. We truly appreciate Absolutely. you uh yeah, you know, stopping by and taking the time to speak with us. Thank you so much, appreciate it, and uh you have a good rest of the day. All right, you too. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with us here on SOB. We hope this episode has been resourceful. If you'd like to check out the latest articles or follow Keetra's website updates, just log on to Keetra.com or follow her on Twitter at K-E-E-T-R-I-A.